do this as quickly as possible. Uh, having been around the TDSB for a number of years, uh, this is not the first time we've been through this process where we've asked the trustees or uh, 4400 has asked the trustees uh, to take a stand and not approve a budget. This happened back a number of years ago in what we call the need to succeed budget under the Mike Harris government where we asked the, the uh, board to vote uh, no to the budget and they did and Mike Harris appointed a supervisor. And that was under the campaign for public education. Just for a little history, 2019, we were here again asking the board again to actually vote no. And at the time, people said, don't worry about it. The election's coming. We'll defeat Doug Ford in the next election. And I reminded them that when Mike Harris was here, that same comment was made, and he was elected into a double majority like Doug Ford has. The rationale for it is, if you look at the 23-24 strategic the, the drivers for the board, it says prioritize student safety, security, and well-being of students and staff by ensuring the appropriate supports in place. That is a lie. They do not prioritize student safety. They do not have the security in place, and they do not take the well-being of students and staff. Consider the long-term impacts of COVID-19 pandemic on student mental health and well-being. We had thousands of kindergarten students go through with not attending classes. Those children are move, moving their way through the system with no supports whatsoever. Review the current service model to prevent and address community and school violence. Anybody who reads the newspaper or you want to follow the thousands of injuries that occur in violent incidents in special ed at no fault of the students is the fault of short staffing. Those strategic drivers are not going to be met. Staff allocation to support all students. Aligning resources to support staff student safety. No. Hire qualified staff. The board cannot hire and retain staff. It's across the city and across the province. And if the, the joke of it is they're going to align the staffing resources to support the multi-year strategic plan and to promote equity and service excellence when they don't have the resources to do it. And under the human resources, all the parents know the equity issues that drive in our schools. They see it across our system. The issues around transphobia, uh, Black Lives Matter, all those issues that we care about are gone. So when I, I just want to go in so people remember, we're talking about hundreds of caretakers being cut. We're talking the layoffs of DECEs. We're talking uh, spec ed EAs being cut. Elementary secretaries that believe that deliver the safe arrival programs are being cut in our schools. So having said all that, we asked as board to vote no. And one of the things that they refer to all the time, and this will end in this, and or end with just the second last point, is under the Education Act, they're responsible for the safety of students. They're responsible for the repairs in buildings. They're running billions of dollars of deficits in the repairs of our school buildings. And under the Act, it's their responsibility, and we say they should take their responsibility safely. They should stand up for students. They should stand up for staff. They should stand up for parents. Just in closing, like I said, a cut by a thousand cuts kills and hurts and harms everybody. We ask this board to stand up. As like I said, I have the shirt that I wore three years ago. It's time to take a stand. And thank you very much for attending and thank you for defending public education. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John, for standing up for our children. Next, I'd like to introduce Helen Victoris. Helen Victoris is the president of the Elementary Teachers of Toronto. The Elementary Teachers of Toronto, ETT, is the Toronto local of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. The local, the largest in Canada, acts as the representative body for almost 10,000 elementary teachers, K-8, to employed by the Toronto District School Board. Welcome, Helen. Thanks, everybody. So great to be with all of you here today. As Nigel said, uh, my name is Helen Victoris. I'm the president of ETT, and our union represents the 10,000 amazing elementary teachers that are working in over 470 TDSB sites uh, all across the Toronto District School Board. We're here today ahead of the TDSB budget vote that is happening in two days on June 22nd. The TDSB came into this school year with a massive $63 million deficit due to chronic provincial underfunding. 
trustees will be voting in two days on whether to make millions of dollars in cuts to our school next year to balance their budget. We're here with parents, with community organizations, with teachers and education workers to deliver the message that there can be no more cuts without significant harm to our students. We already have class sizes of up to 36 students. We've got escalating violent incidents in our schools because our students don't have the supports that they need and deserve. We've got a shocking triaging of student special education needs due to a lack of staff like educational assistants, child and youth workers, and social workers. We've got ongoing building repair issues because of a massive backlog of $17 billion in this province. At a time when every single expert is clear that our students need more supports, more caring adults, not fewer, the almost 600 staff that are already on the chopping block, including elementary teachers, administrators, special education and support staff, caretakers, lunchroom supervisors, early reading coaches, literacy coaches, and more will have a devastating impact on our students. There's no way that these cuts won't be felt by our students because there was no room to cut in the first place. The impact will be felt, the impact will be felt, we know most acutely on those students who are already marginalized because of issues like systemic racism and poverty which our government refuses to address. Since 2018, the Ford government has taken $2.5 billion out of public education when adjusted for inflation. What's so outrageous is that report after report shows that there's actually more than enough for all of us. Last week, the Financial Accountability Office announced the Ford government is sitting on $22 billion in excess funds. Shamefully, the Ford government is starving our schools while they literally hoard billions of dollars. What is $63 million that our board is facing in a deficit compared to $22 billion in unallocated funds? And it's only going to get worse if we don't stand up right now. We know that this situation is not of the trustees making. The Ford government and Education Minister Stephen Lecce have put them in a terrible situation. It's so typical of this government to starve our public sector services, to starve our public education system for years and leave teachers and education sector workers on the ground struggling to try to deliver more and more with less and less. Trustees, you should not do Ford's dirty work. Our students, our students deserve a high quality equitable, inclusive public education system where all of their needs are truly met and they can thrive. This requires investment and you have the money to invest. We call on trustees to stand with parents, teachers and education workers and community-based organizations and allies against any more cuts, against any more harm to our students and we will be with you fighting to secure the funding for the schools our students deserve. Thank you so much. Thank you, Helen. Next, I would like to introduce Laura Kirby McIntosh. Lori, Laura, Laura, Laura Kirby McIntosh, sorry, Laura, uh, is the past president of the Ontario Autism Coalition, member of the coalition's education working group, secondary school teacher, and a parent of two adult children with special needs. Welcome, Laura. Thank you so much. Um, I don't have any prepared remarks today, so forgive me, I am a, a high school teacher in June going off the cuff, which means anything could happen. Um, as a mom, I want to speak first to our fears as parents of what happens when cuts affect classrooms. I'm the mom that was afraid that my son would go to school and sneak out of the classroom when no one was looking, leave the building, and exit the school property and get lost and get injured, find a body of water or something worse. We know when there aren't enough education assistants in the class, when their class sizes are too high, our students become dysregulated, they go into meltdown more often, they're more at risk. 
you know, the other thing that boils my blood in this situation is that, you know, when school boards prepare budgets and they make cuts, they never make cuts at the top. You know, they never cut their own salaries. They never cut administration or consultants or superintendents. The cuts always seem to come for the most vulnerable students. And that just doesn't seem right to me. Does it seem right to you? No. The other thing, and this was just mentioned in the speaker prior to me, the other thing that boils my blood is that there is enough money to meet the needs of all of the students, not just in the TDSB, but across this province. Right. How dare this government sit on $22 billion when our schools are floundering, when our healthcare system is falling apart, when adults with disabilities are, are having to choose between paying rent and buying groceries. It, it, it doesn't speak well to, I mean, you judge a government, you judge a school board by what they prioritize and how do you establish their priorities? You look at where they spend their money. And so when I look at the proposed cuts in this budget and I look at the proposed cuts that are happening across this province, I see a pattern. I see school boards and a provincial government that continue to target the most vulnerable in our society. As an educator, that's not okay with me. I want to work in a school system where all of my students have all of the resources that they need to succeed. And that's not what we're getting today. So I urge the trustees of the Toronto District School Board and trustees across this province, stand up to Doug Ford, say no to budgets with cutbacks, and protect our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. So I'd like to finally bring up a parent, another parent. Alejandra Gonzalez Jimenez has been leading the fight against education cuts at her school located in Ward 9. She, along with parents and guardians from six schools, gathered over 1,000 signatures in 11 days to present a petition against education cuts at the Legislative Assembly of Ontario on May 31st. Welcome, Alejandra. Hi, and thank you so much for having us, having parents here at this press conference. My name is Alejandra Gonzalez Jimenez, and I, I am a parent of Felix, who is in grade three at Dover Car Public School. Earlier this spring, a group of parents from across Toronto formed a coalition to push back against education cuts. Our schools are losing special education assistance, education, educational assistance, teachers, lunchroom lunch supervisors, supply teachers, vice principals, early reading instructors, caretakers, child and youth counselors, and clerical staff. Learning conditions at our schools are already inadequate, and these cuts will make our schools even more overcrowded, unhealthy, and unsafe. Violent events in our schools have increased, as have emergency room visits to serve harm related to self-harm among children and youth. Black mothers in our coalition report that their children are tormented almost daily by vicious racism. There are no special needs assistance to, su to support the children who need them. Students have, have had classes canceled because there were no supply teachers. Despite claims of low enrollment, some schools are in fact overcrowded. Libraries are used as classrooms, and children are eating on hallways, hallways floors while rodents run around them. This is all happening at a time when our students are struggling to overcome the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, which we all know caused serious academic, social, and emotional damage to our kids. Education cuts disproportionately affect and further marginalize low-income and racialized children and youth. To reverse these shocking conditions, TDSB schools need more funding, not less. We need more caring adults to make schools a safe place for all our children to thrive and succeed. Trustees, we know you are between a rock, uh, between a rock and a hard place. We know you must pass a budget that for years has normalized and the systemic 
this regard for the well-being of our children and youth because Bill 98 has tied your hands. As our elected advocates for public education, we ask you to come forward and speak to us transparently about these cuts and what they are doing to our schools. Where we ask you to organize in your ward to fight against education cuts instead of repeating the official TDSV script. We will win a well-funded quality public education system when parents, guardians, students and trustees, as well as teachers and education worker unions come together to fight against education cuts. Our children deserve so much than what the TDSB budget is allocating to them. Parents, guardians and students demand that the provincial government release the $22 billion in surplus funds, release the money and fund public education. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandra. So at this point, we would like to open it up for any questions from the media. Just checking, that would be you, you're good? Okay, all right, great. So at this point, that will bring our press conference to an end. We are encouraging you to please do your best, call your, your trustee right now, tell them that to vote for a, uh, and what you heard today, to vote for a budget that will actually meet the needs of our children. Call your trustee, call your MPP. And we know that Doug Ford and this government have the money to do this. There's more than enough for all of us. Thank you very much. And that ends our press conference for the day.